edition of Tale of the Tape after a very long, long, long hiatus. Uh, it's good to be back. It's TJT, your resident marksman, here on Tamagazi Wrestling, and today we are going to be looking at the match card for Survivor Series 2017, a card that is honestly pretty stacked and has the potential to be, uh, let's see, probably of the big four pay-per-views this year, could actually rival some of them. Now, this WrestleMania was, I think, objectively, one of the better WrestleManias, especially in terms of recent years. Uh, is it better than WrestleMania 31? No, I don't think so. Not really, especially with the way that it ended, 31's ending, clearly superior over 33's ending. Uh, but, with all that said... Survivor Series has a lot of potential. There are a lot of good matches with some good workers. Uh, there's a lot of storyline potential setting up possible WrestleMania clashes. So let's not waste any time. Let's get right into it with the kickoff match. This is the, w uh, the WWE Cruiserweight Championship match between champion Enzo Amore and challenger uh, Callisto. Uh, now, this is this is... A match that I don't really care about, so it's gonna be <laughs> it's gonna be very difficult to just kind of call it. Uh, although, uh, though I want them to go with Kalisto because just Enzo is Enzo, but honestly, I can totally see why they would keep the belt on Enzo. Um, you know, save when he, like, really ends his reign for something big, unlike what they did when they randomly just gave the belt to Kalisto. I don't know. It was very similar to when they gave uh, Akira the belt during Neville's, like, really long reign, and we were just like, what? <laughs> and then he ended up getting it right back, and we were just like, um, okay. <laughs> uh, so my pick for this match is going to be Enzo Amore, uh, I think it's objectively the right call for a couple different reasons, uh, even though I don't really care for Enzo, and this is not, you know, because he's a good heel and I don't like him, this is more so just because, you know, I would ho I would have hoped that the cruiserweight division would have had a much better representative in ring-wise than Enzo Amore, who I don't really think is that great of a wrestler at all. And contrary to a lot of people, I really hate when he talks. Like, it's so it's so drawn out and boring to me. And maybe that's a controversial opinion. Maybe you agree with me, but it is what it is. So that's the Cruiserweight Championship match. Now let's get into the main show here with the Intercontinental Champion versus the United States Champion, The Miz versus Baron Corbin. Now, this one is actually pretty difficult to call because you have two heels here going head-to-head, -head, although I think in the minds of the fans, The Miz is basically the face in this, uh, me, in this competition, especially when you consider what has happened via social media. I think, honestly... Baron is very much the heel in this match, and The Miz is sort of tweener, sort of tweener. Um, although this year, and arguably last year as well, The Miz has been big with the fans. So it's been questionable whether he's actually really been a heel, but no doubt he's been really entertaining. Far more entertaining than Baron Corbin has been, in my opinion. And that's may or may not have something to do with politics, behind the scenes, but whatever. Uh, so The Miz versus Baron Corbin is difficult to sort of predict. However, I will tentatively go with Baron Corbin, uh, purely because I think it's going to be some sort of underhanded tactic because The Miz is basically the face of the two of them and Corbin's going to somehow cheat to win, uh, or it could just be a matter of the size and, you know, power differential between the two. Uh, Corbin may just honestly just beat The Miz. Uh, even though I would honestly rather see The Miz win just because The Miz, like I said, has been doing some great, great work. Uh, but my pick is going to be with Baron Corbin for this one. 
which has us moving right along to the Tag Team Champions match, the Raw Tag Team Champions, the Bar versus the SmackDown Tag Team Champions, the Usos. And though I would have loved to have seen <laughs> uh, uh, Rollins and Ambrose versus the Usos, and I that would have been an amazing match. This is going to be a match that is arguably just as good uh, between two teams that, you know, don't really... you. It's weird to sort of picture them going at it, but at the same time, you know, all four of these guys are great workers. The Usos are fantastic tag team workers. Cesaro and Sheamus are good both in the tag team department and in singles competitions, so... It's probably gonna it's gonna it's gonna be a really good match. Uh, the great thing about this card, just from looking at it, is there's not a ton of matches, so hopefully that leads to a lot of spreading of the wealth and a lot of matches get time to breathe and develop their stories and get their pacing right and not everything is rushed and kind of clumsy or over in the blink of an eye. There's no like bathroom break matches or filler matches or anything like that. Unless they decide to throw that in, like something with Elias and Jason Jordan or something. Um, but anyway, The Bar versus The Usos is another one that's difficult to call just because both teams are really good. And I don't think the, mo the momentum is way in the favor of either team. Uh... But you know what? I may have to stick with the whole, you know, the heels kind of eking out victories here and go, even though I haven't watched uh, Raw or SmackDown, like actually watched them in a while. Uh, so I don't know. Are the Usos still heel? Or I kind of saw somewhere that they were essentially faces now, but technically they're still heels or I don't know. It's kind of screwy. Um, I wouldn't mind seeing a foos, a foos, a face Uso team after this, uh, but I think they are they are so hill. So you have two back to back heel versus heel teams. I think, uh, but regardless, I think the bar are more heelish right now, arguably. Um, so I would count on them doing something kind of underhanded to steal the victory, but not only that, tie up uh, SmackDown and Raw at one apiece, so it makes sense if this is the order. Now, this is from WWE that I'm looking at the match card here, and it's essentially I'm going up the card, so you would expect to think that since this is on WWE's actual site, this is sort of going to be the order of the matches. Uh, so, if that is the case, it would make sense for them to then go SmackDown wins one, Raw wins one. Uh, which brings us right along to the women's 5-on-5 five -five traditional Survivor Series elimination match. We have Team Raw with Captain Alicia Fox, Bayley, Sasha Banks, Nia Jax, and Asuka versus the... Uh, no, okay. I was about to say it was Asuka making her pay-per-view debut, but she made her debut at a pay-per-view. <laughs> Uh, versus SmackDown with team captain Becky Lynch, Naomi, Carmella, Tamina, and officially announced today, Natalia. Now, a lot of people were speculating that perhaps Paige was going to fill that fifth spot on team SmackDown. It has been announced to have been Natalia, but WWE literally did this last year. It was it last year? I think I believe it was literally last year where someone gets taken out and then somebody makes their now in that case it was Natalia who was already on the roster but here they could always take one of the players out most likely Natalia and then put Paige in uh I don't know if they're gonna do that because I had read a report that you know WWE officials were going to premiere Paige on this week's Monday Night Raw but because she sort of spoiled it on social media they scrapped that which would assumably mean they kind of have scrapped plans for Paige. So right now, Paige is just kind of floating, waiting on something. Now, they could have something by the time Survivor Series rolls around and then uh, have her sub in Natalia, or maybe they swerve us completely, and my screen 
went. <laughs> I gotta log back in here. Or maybe they could swerve us and actually take out a member of Team Raw. Maybe the captain, Alicia Fox, and then sub her in with Paige or something. I don't know. But on to the prediction, and I think they would be fools if they go with Team SmackDown. They have to go with Team Raw because Asuka's on Team Raw. So to somehow deliver Asuka's first ever loss in WWE in the Survivor Series traditional elimination match is just kind of weird. Unless I had this like crazy idea that maybe Bailey turns heel here <laughs> and like screws over Asuka at the very end and Asuka is going to be the sole survivor. But then Bailey turns heel, and what a way to turn her heel! <laughs> or maybe the same thing ha happens with Sasha Banks, and huge heat giving Asuka her first ever loss in WWE in NXT or the main roster that way. That would be huge heat, but I don't think they're going to do that. Um, I think Asuka is going to secure the win for Team Raw. Whether or not she's the sole survivor is irrelevant. Um, so, yeah, I'm going with Team Raw for the women's 5-on-5 five -five traditional Survivor Series elimination match, which takes us right into the women's champion versus champion match, the Raw women's champion Alexa Bliss versus SmackDown women's champion, new SmackDown Live women's champion Charlotte Flair. Now, are you sensing a theme? This is another hard one to call. <laughs> uh, all the... Champion versus champion ones, save for Lesnar versus Styles, for obvious, unfortunate reasons. Uh, all of them are a little bit hard to call because so many of them have people who are even, they're like right here in terms of momentum, in terms of like likability, or in terms of standing with the company. Or So it's very difficult to sort of go, which way are they going to go? But I'm going to go with my gut here. I'm going to go with my gut and say that Charlotte takes this victory, which then, uh, yes, this would then tie back up the score because if you notice, it would have gone SmackDown, Raw, and then Raw again. So Charlotte would win here, tying them back up. Uh, just because, I don't know, I honestly don't see Alexa Bliss beating Charlotte. I mean, she could cheat to win, but at the same time, it's like, especially if you're following the way that I'm predicting the match, that means that every single match other than the <laughs> traditional elimination match has been a cheat to win. Like, we can't have all these heels winning. <laughs> we got we to have, like, one face win. <laughs> um, now, I don't know, like... It seemed to me at the beginning of this build towards Survivor Series, they were making SmackDown the heels in sort of the rivalry of Raw versus SmackDown. And I don't think it's that case anymore. I think now it's a little bit, they're back to sort of being even, there is no real face or heel Raw or SmackDown roster. Although I think they are sort of painting Raw to be a little bit of the underdog that has to fight their way back from the bottom, which makes complete sense with how Vince McMahon likes to do things. <sighs> it's like, look, we get it. Like, there have been a lot of great underdog stories in media, in WWE, but not everything has to be the un the underdog story, okay? <laughs> There's a reason we like people like Goldberg and Asuka and, you know, all that, you know? <laughs> it doesn't always have to be that way. But regardless, I'm going to go with Charlotte over Alexa Bliss, because I just, I don't see Alexa beating Charlotte here. I think Charlotte just won the title, like, literally this week. I think she carries that momentum into Survivor Series, comes out on top. They make her look strong for whatever they got planned on going on at WrestleMania. Or, who knows? I, I've seen people go like, well, Carmella could always, you know, cash in. She could cash in on Charlotte, become the new SmackDown Live Women's Champion, or there could be a loophole in that she pins Alexa or somehow both of them and, you know, unites the championships. Or I think that's a little... Uh, that's pushing it, one, because it's Carmella. Like, maybe if... Maybe if someone like... 
I don't know. <laughs> Uh, maybe, I don't know, maybe if someone like Sasha Banks was money in the bank, women's money in the bank winner, I could sort of see that happening, because she had, she, I think she could pull that off, and the company would have enough faith in her to do that, but then it's a whole bigger question of, how are they possibly gonna book that from here on out? What, are they gonna have a triple threat to try and split the titles back up on Royal Rumble? Like, that's pretty much the next time that the brands are on the same pay-per-view so i don't know i think that's just kind of a mess but either way i'm going with uh charlotte to be the smackdown women's she is i'm going with charlotte to beat alexa bliss that's what i'm trying to say uh so next we have the shield versus the new day which is sure to be a great match of course these are two of the best stables the best three-man teams that we've seen in WWE in I can't even remember when. Like, so this is going to be an amazing match. I can't wait. Of course the Shield is going to win. I think it would be crazy <laughs> for WWE to have the Shield lose <laughs> in their first, like, official pay-per-view back as the Shield. No. I don't think, no, I don't think they're going to do that. Um... And so then we come to the men's five-on-five -five traditional Survivor Series elimination match with Raw, captained by Kurt Angle, Triple H, Braun Strowman, Finn Balor, and Samoa Joe, hell of a team, versus the SmackDown Live team, captained, captained by Shane McMahon, John Cena, Randy Orton, Shinsuke Nakamura, and Bobby Roode, a great team in its own right, and... As usual, this is another one that's very hard to call, but I'm going to go with my gut again and go with Team SmackDown because, I don't know, there's something about that that makes sense from a WWE logic perspective. Uh, Vince, for whatever reason, always likes to sort of put SmackDown over at Survivor Series, for one, that's one thing, and then two... Kurt Angle and Triple H on the same team. I don't know. I smell some funny business there. <laughs> um, this is actually really interesting, though, because I, I could see two potential matches happening at WrestleMania 34. Kurt Angle versus Triple H or Triple H versus Shane McMahon. So, and, like, they're both almost like they're both just as likely to happen. So it's just weird. I don't know, but I think it's tiny. It's a tiny bit more likely that it'll be Triple H versus Kurt Angle, which may lead to Triple H screwing over Kurt Angle. Maybe, I don't know, as punishment. As punishment for him not being a good general manager on Raw. But then that would, so, that would still cost Raw the match. So, But it's WWE, so... <laughs> I mean, it's not the weirdest thing they've ever done. <laughs> um, but I'm going to go ahead, even though Raw has a really good team, they have a really good team, and even now I'm sort of doubting it, but I'm still going to go ahead and go with SmackDown Live for the traditional 5-on-5 five -five elimination Survivor Series match, which, of course ties everything up, which is just how WWE love to do things, leading in to the champion versus champion, universal champion Brock Lesnar with his advocate Paul Heyman versus WWE champion AJ Styles. I think it's going to be, if Brock is in the right mood, it could be a hell of a match. I don't think it's going to be a match of the night. I don't think it's going to be a match of the night. On, the, on a night where you have the Bar versus the Usos and you have the five-on-five five elimination match, and you have the Shield versus the New Day, I doubt that even AJ Styles can get a, ma a show-stealer main event from Brock Lesnar on this card. On this card? No, I don't think so. But I think it's still hopefully going to be a good match. Hopefully it's not a squash. Hopefully Lesnar's up for, you know, playing ball. I mean, look what happened at SummerSlam. Like... 
Brock must have been in a really good mood when they were devising that match because that match was awesome. That match was gold in terms of like storytelling, in terms of drama, like all that stuff. Uh, so hopefully they continue that here. Uh, now the last few times I've seen Brock Lesnar wrestle, or I shouldn't say that, no. Uh, the last two single opponent matches that I've seen Brock Lesnar wrestle, because I think Samoa Joe was before SummerSlam. Yeah, I think that was uh, SummerSlam. Uh, Samoa Joe was before SummerSlam. So his match against S Samoa Joe and against Braun Strowman weren't the best, and then they both ended after one F five. I think Strowman only, only ended after one F five. I think, and that was weird. Uh, so I don't know who's making those calls. Is it Vince? I mean, is it is it somebody else? Is it Brock? I I don't know. But hopefully, 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 Brock versus AJ is just as good in the execution as it seems to be on paper. But of course I have to go with Brock Lesnar because it's Brock Lesnar. Not only are they building him up for Roman Reigns to take out at WrestleMania, even though I don't agree with it. Even though I don't agree with it. <laughs> Despite the shirt I'm... Look, this, look, look. This is the only wrestling shirt that I have that fits me well. So... You want, you want to change that? Send me a new shirt. <laughs> Send me a better shirt. Send me a Seth Rollins shirt or a Kevin Owens shirt. I don't know. I don't care. <laughs> but just because I have a Roman Reigns shirt doesn't mean that I'm like a Roman Reigns mark and I'm pulling for him to main event his fourth fourth WrestleMania in a row in a repeat match where he has to be crowned again. Like, no. I don't want... No. In, in my opinion, I think it's far better... To have Finn versus Brock, which they kind of had hinted at beforehand. I would ra I would much rather see Finn versus Brock and Finn turn heel at WrestleMania, reunite with the club to finish off Brock Lesnar because, I mean, that's kind of the only way they could really justify it. I mean, they could have the demon thing, sure, but still, it's still Brock Lesnar. So I think Demon Finn reunites with the club. And then you have the club versus the shield right there. You Club versus the shield. Club versus the New Day. Like, you could do... The point is, <laughs> I think it's very short-sighted, knee-jerk, and shows very little faith in the rest of the roster to go with a repeat rematch at WrestleMania with Reigns... Again, and especially since Reigns is part of the Shield now, just you—you you gotta do something with the Shield. Don't split up the Shield again. Like you might as well stay with the Shield through WrestleMania. Give the Shield a good match at WrestleMania. I don't know against who, like. <laughs> but no, come on, anything but that. But regardless, those are my picks for WWE Survivor Series 2017. To recap, we got Enzo Amore retaining his Cruiserweight Championship on the pre-show. We got Baron Corbin over The Miz. We got The Bar over The Usos. We got uh, Team Raw for the women's 5-on-5 five -five elimination match. We got Charlotte over Alexa. We got The Shield over New Day. We have Team SmackDown over Team Raw for the men's 5-on-5 five -five elimination match. And we cap off the night with Brock Lesnar. Oh, what is... Oh. It's not the... Conquering. There we go. <laughs> Blinked for a second. Brock Lesnar conquering AJ Styles in what is hopefully a somewhat competitive match. Come on, Brock. Come on. <laughs> if it is, in fact, Brock that's making these decisions, or if it's Vince, I don't care who it is. Give us a good match, guys. It's a really good match on paper. Make sure it, make sure it delivers. Come on. <laughs> Uh, anyway, what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments section below. As always, if you enjoyed this, please like, share, and subscribe. And until next time, I'm TJ from Atomic Wrestling, and I'll catch you guys later.